Hey guys, um, I'm back finally from my uh, trip. I was in Hawaii for the last 10 days, so I apologize for not getting a video out sooner. Um, however, I got back home at like 11 p.m. last night, and I still stayed up till like 5 in the morning, and I also played a bit this morning too, and I've been keeping up with all the comments, with all uh, the recommendations that you guys um, told me. Um, I just want to say thanks to everyone for watching and commenting. I didn't expect the video to get over 20,000 views. Um, so thank you to everyone who um, watched the video, um, commented, liked. Um, didn't expect that amount of overwhelming support, so thank you to everyone. Um, so I'm just going to try to get this update video out now. Um, essentially, um, not much has changed with my build. The main thing I've done since I got home was I unspecced out of Blade Master. Um, the problem with Blade Master is now that we're running a sword and an axe, Blade Master only helps with Grelwood Shank, really doesn't do anything for Soul Taker. Um, so I decided to drop Blade Master and drop these two nodes here. And I also dropped this life and armor. I also dropped these three strength nodes here. And instead, I pathed up this way um, through Master of Arena in there. And then I came all the way up here to get me uh, an additional jewel socket and um, access to this berserking wheel here. Which, um, if I have my concepts understand correctly, um, increased attack speed affects all your weapons. So it affects Grelwood Shank and Soul Taker. Um, whereas Blade Master only affected my Grelwood Shank. So um, it's just a little more efficient on the tree. So now um, I have nothing that's strictly axes or swords. It's all um, applied to both. So as you can see, I'm using things like dual wielding and all my jewels. I have either one-handed melee weapons or dual wielding. Um, so just make sure to kind of, um, I would say, do that. If you're gonna go um, with the Soul Thirst route with Soul Taker and Grill with Shank, um, I'll go through the, some of the recommendations you guys gave me because there was a lot. Um, one of the big ones was first to take Mind Over Matter. Um, I think I got that one the most. Um, I played around with this. I think Mind Over Matter isn't too bad of a choice if you have issues keeping your mana low. However, I I tested it out, um, personally, I found that I was already at zero mana all the time, and uh, Mind Over Matter really doesn't do anything um, in that in that case, um, because obviously it doesn't have any survivability bonus um, since I was already at zero mana all the time, and I didn't need the extra, I guess, support to keep my mana depleted, so personally, I didn't find Mind Over Mana mind over matter too useful however if you find that you have trouble um keeping your mana low and it tops off and you lose soul um your soul leader buff then you may want to consider mind over matter just to help um keep that mana low something else i actually considered was dropping feathered mind um, one other big update i made to my build was i actually got a new helm I bought this helm right here for a little over 10 exalts. Um, it was a pretty good buy, I think. Um, however, you can get a helm um, like this for a lot cheaper if you um, just take the levels a little lower. So I know I saw plenty of level 16 emulate, level 16 conch effect with the horror enchant, the 30% more elemental damage for like four to six exalts. Um, this one's just a little more expensive because it was level 20 emulate, level 18 conch. Um, it also has this Fizz Damage to Spells, which doesn't do anything for our build, but um, in the future, if somebody else wants to use this helm, it may be useful for like Blade Vortex or something like that. Um, uh, but it was pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good buy. The only thing I really have left to do now is either get um, the Temporal Chain's Curse Effect or plus three Molten Strike Projectiles. If I land either of those, I'll probably just keep it. Um, so I'll probably be doing some lab runs. Um... But I was considering dropping Feathered Mind because now my mana cost doubled, so it, um, without, um, Feathered Mind, my mana cost is 35. Um, before on the previous video, if you guys watch, my mana cost was 35 with Feathered Mind. So essentially what happened is after I upgraded to this helm, I essentially got another Feathered Mind, 
um, kind of on top of the one I have now. So I'm really strongly considering dropping Feathered Mind. Maybe I might drop Feathered Mind, pick up Mind Over Matter, um, just to help out with that, and then freeze up a Jewel Socket. So I may kind of play around with that. Um, but for now, I still keep Feather in mind. Um, the mana cost is 70, so now it's it's ridiculously easy for me to um, keep my mana low and pretty much zero, which is why right now I didn't take Mind Over Matter. Um, next big recommendation was to drop faster attacks and get increased duration in my Curse on Hit, Temp Chains, Leap Slam, um, Links. Um, it wasn't a bad recommendation. I thought um, it made kind of made sense. Um, I checked the numbers and it essentially increased my um, curse lasts time from 5 seconds um, all the way up to 9 seconds. So it added about 4 seconds of duration time on my temporal chains. One thing you guys have to keep in mind is if you're going to use increased duration on temp chains, it's not going to increase the uptime of your flask or of the mana flask. That's kind of one thing to keep in mind. So temporal chains curse effect is different from increased duration on temporal chains. It's not the same thing. Um, so just putting an increased duration in temp chains is just going to um, increase the time that the curse is inflicted on you. It's not, the curse itself isn't going to um, make your mana flask last longer. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, however, if you still don't want to leap slam around every four seconds instead every nine seconds, um, then yeah, it's a pretty good kind of quality of life thing. However, if you like to go a little quicker, um, then you can keep faster attacks. I think either one is honestly fine. It's sort of personal preference. For me, I have plus two socketed curse gems in my shackles of the wretched, so I just decided to keep faster attacks because I didn't want to lose the plus two curse level. Um, let's see, what was the next recommendation? Um, let's see. Uh, what was the next thing? Gosh, I know there were a few more. Oh, take a Val Breach gem. Um, that is some, definitely something I will do at some point. However, I just don't have the money for a Val Breach gem right now. Um, one issue with this league is, is Xana doesn't have Breach. Um, so the only way to get a Val Breach gem that I know of right now is through Divination cards. Um, I think it's through the corrupted gem or like any any level any level level one gem or, or something like that. I know it's through a couple of the divination cards. The only way to get a Val Breach gem right now, so um, they're quite rare. I think they go for like four to six exalts right now. So um, they're sort of not cheap. It's probably going to be the next thing I um, I save up for. Um, but other than that, I think I covered most of the. Um, the recommendations you guys told me to do. Um, a lot of people asked for my um, my Pantheons. Um, again, all the stuff that I generally kind of go off of is based on Undeniable Jug, which I'll again post a link in the description. Um, but my Pantheons, I'm using Soul of Arkali and Soul of Ralakesh. Um, I like Ralakesh because it gives you a chance to avoid bleeding entirely. Um, it reduces physical damage over time taken while moving. That's really nice for labs. And you can't be blind and you can't be maimed. I think this is really one of the strongest um, minor god pantheons there is. Um, so generally, I always kind of go with this one. And Solar Kali, um, I'd say just make sure you get Capture Eric Noxia for the 50% um, increased recovery rate. Um, just kind of lets you regen your life a lot faster. Um, I have my Blood Rage on um, Cast and Damage Taken. It'll probably be better if it wasn't on Cast and Damage Taken. That way, um, you could just keep recasting Blood Rage, and it'll keep redoing this effect every four seconds. Um, however, that's another button you're gonna have to press every four seconds. So I just, I just kind of forget about it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the update. Um, really, that's all. Just getting a Val Breach Dem is pretty much more or less the last thing I have left to do on this build. Um, everything else is more or less done. There's just kind of min-max stuff at this point. If maybe I get like a um, culling strike on one of these weapons or uh, something else. But more or less the build is, um, I'd say, pretty much done. If anyone has any questions, um, just leave them in the comments below. Oh, one more thing I did get recommended to do is throw in combustion somewhere, which I also did. Uh, which I thought was a very good recommendation. So what I did was I just switched 
threw out the um, melee physical damage, and I put in combustion um, with Ancestral Protector. Um, Ancestral Protector is a um, great little bonus to this build because it's a 20% more attack speed while Totem's active. Um, so it's a really, really huge bonus. Um, as you can see, my uh, attacks per second is 8.4 with the Totem. Uh, goes up to 10, so pretty significant, and um, the totem also, um, every time it hits something, it'll um, give the um, negative 19% to fire res, which is huge. Um, the other thing combustion is really great for is it has a 48% chance to ignite, um, which will really um, help because it'll pretty much um, activate immolate. Um, immolate works by... Um, see here, um, 205 to 308 added fire damage against burning enemies. Um, right now, my base ignite isn't too, too high. So right now I have, um, 6.7% chance, um, to ignite essentially because all your crits will ignite. Um, and then I also have a flat 5% chance to ignite from one of the um, nodes on the tree, um, which is right here. So essentially my ignite chance right now if I just just hit something is about 11%. However, if I throw up my totem and the totem say hits a boss or something like that, um, it should pretty much instantly ignite it and that'll activate the 19% reduced fire resistance and it'll activate my immolate. So getting this combustion on the ancestral protector was definitely a very, very good recommendation. Um, so I definitely did that. And uh, that was a really good call to whoever, um, I don't, I apologize for not remembering who it was, but I remember somebody said, throw in combustion somewhere. Um, so that was a really good call, so I did that. Um, I think that's really it, I, I pretty much covered everything. I think um, my, my cold res is a little low since I switched to this helm, I'm just going to fix that um, relatively soon. Um, but if anyone has any more questions, again, just leave them in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching this little update. Um, if anyone else, if there's more questions, stuff like that, maybe I'll make another video. Maybe once I get a couple more levels, um, I'll kind of do another sort of quick check-in. I'll probably be shorter than this video. But anyways, um, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.